So like I kind of mentioned in the intro, that this is, this is just for discussion, a lot of discussion we already just had, so that's all, that's great. I mean, hopefully we'll continue it. Um, so a little bit of historical context, the current state, and I think we're kind of rooting that out now. Current challenges, I think some of the questions were doing exactly that. And uh, some transition options, again, I'm just throwing out two ideas, and it's kind of the place to just knock them around, and certainly we have all week, hopefully people are staying all week, and then a call to serve. So here's, and some of this has been, this is just a little different focus. So we started, and I've kind of verbally mentioned this, so we started down at Goddard, and, and Goddard had the same, I think in a way we've propagated the Goddard challenge to the NASA level, and now we're trying to propagate it even higher. <laughs> but the challenge was Goddard has the same thing. All our, every, we're, we're all product funded. I mean, that's how we work. So when we would try to get a product line going, um, we had to rely on some other external sources of funding, leveraging products, projects, and, but the good thing is, I mean, we made a product line approach that I mentioned in the intro, and we did life cycle artifacts. So that worked, we think. So we pushed it up the NASA level, and we've already kind of gone through some of the history there. And we're, and as some of the questions of, you know, said, we, we're not totally open right now. We are in a NASA world where we, we write the tickets, and, and uh, we certainly communicate with the outside, but not in a formal way. So. These are the kind of questions. Um, so who controls which artifacts? Again, maybe everything's fine. Nothing to change. And, but I just want to take a little time today while we have everybody in the room to talk about them. What's the scope of trouble tickets? Right now we're limited to people that have Babelfish accounts, which are limited by, I guess, NASA and DC accounts. So, and who can make contributions? Whether we want to have a open contribution, but there's some challenges there. I mean, our, and I have a, try to come up with kind of a, I call it a mission statement. That's, you know, that's, sometimes I can come across too friendly. <coughs> and people think that's too, you know, too far out there. But we do, I mean, as a, as a NASA, one of the things we did do down here, we have a, we do have requirements we got to meet. So we have something, our NASA processor requirements are called 7150.2.b. <laughs> so, and we got to meet those for our class missions, and it defines what our class of missions are, and that's what we have to meet. So we're maintaining that pedigree. And how we manage technology infusion, and how do we control quality, which is... So those are, you know... So this is kind of the world as it currently exists, at least my... And if it's wrong, it's, so we got our NASA change requests are within the NASA organization. We get contributions, and that's really by the CCB participants. And we release products, but we actually release them individually, so it's the responsibilities for the user to integrate them into something that they want. And that's, you know, again, we're a government organization. We, we, with a little more effort, we could get into a productized um, environment, and that's kind of what's happening with these kits that I have a section later on. I mean, people are kind of doing that role of creating a distribution. And it's whether we formalize that or not. So that's our current. Um, so challenges in that model is, you know, users must assemble their products. I guess, does anybody, I mean, I'll open a floor. Is that a pain in the butt? I mean, how do people feel about that? It's, I see a, maybe, <laughs> I mean, I don't know. We, for us, you say, oh, you know, because it came out of our group. So for us, it's like, oh, well, we know what to put together. And it's not a different hat. You know, we just kind of do it. Um, I have gotten feedback in terms of it's hard to evaluate, especially for products of limited funding. You know, if it's hard to evaluate, you know, is the CFS right for me? And that is a tricky, um, you know, having that documentation. So I have a little feedback. I'm, I'm sorry. No, this is great. I'm this is why we're. That, yeah, we should. We could have had a second podium for it, Lori. <laughs> Right. Make it as easy it, as you can for anybody that's wanting that. And I, I found, I've, I've gotten feedback that from some of our robotic community people, they're going, okay, well, just tell me how I can just easily, you know, do the, you know, 
five minute eval, people have a short attention span. So, <laughs> so I know if you have a real slight project and you, you know you're probably going to use this, you dig in and you, you use it. But for people that are on the fence and they don't right. know what it is, I mean, it's sort of nice to have a, a very unified way right. of getting the whole thing rather than, you know, get this layer, get this layer, get this app, get, you know, it's. All right. Okay. It yeah. work well for the, some of the new, sure. new people. <laughs> and we don't have a donate. I don't want to complain about no, it. No, no, that's not, compl that's <laughs> why, <laughs> well, I put these slides together. I was a little, like, I don't want this to sound so negative because it's like, it, it, but I want to be real about, you know, where we. Oh. So I'm just going to. Okay. No, that's great. Thank you. No, this is, did you well, want? I just, maybe the kit is one of the ways it's, it's, it, it's all one big tarball with everything integrated and you right. throw that down. Is that the intent there? It's definitely the, yes. I, I think it's an intent, but you still got some, and, and I guess the one that we've worked on, Alan and I and some other, some interns, um, it's using Cosmos, which is an open source freely. So again, the one, the zero friction. I mean, if you can make it the second, you've got to do one piece of paperwork. <laughs> it's, but, it, but it's but out of the box. It's out of the box. Up and running with like all 12 apps. And um, we didn't add, we actually didn't add, we, on ours, and again, this was resource driven again. We just picked a couple core ones that we thought a lot of people would use. So again, it's easier to understand immediately. And I'd love to see an app plugin model for a kit. So that way we don't even have to, okay. you, 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 you don't have to have, because the apps are going to keep expanding. So what do you include? in the kit. And, and the other one app we included, um, and it's, I haven't really gone through a good vetting, pro, but we had an intern write a benchmark app. And that we found, you know, it's kind of neat. So then you have the benchmark right out, so you can run it, and then you move to a target platform, run the same benchmarks, or shift p platforms. And it needs a little work, but he did a great job. I mean, he, in 10 weeks. Yeah, it's, well, I guess on, uh, just to follow up, make sure that the, the feedback people have is of what was hard and all that kind of stuff would be good to get. So. So these kits, I think the kits are the way to go. Sort of just download this and it brings everything up and then play. It's easier to pull things out than it is to stick things in there. Right. You know, just don't start up the app if you don't want, but they all build. But on our kit, what well, I limited too though, when you go <coughs> maintaining the kit gets harder. If you put all 12 apps and you said, oh God, that one just updated, do I update that now? So if you kept to a core set and you said, okay, okay. I can manage this a little. And again, it was Alan and I working <laughs> lunchtime, I think it was. Yeah, I mean, we, we had the kit, and then also, it kind of in the background, I've been working on sort of a reference distribution with all the open source releases, and I'm, it's almost there, ready for distribution. I'm trying to make sure that everything in it is open source so that I can just put it even on like another GitHub account or something, or just distribute it as a tarball. So if we have that, then that is kind of a one download. And I was actually thinking about creating a script that could just download the latest releases and integrate them into this release, this distribution. So that's <coughs> definitely one of our goals is to have it much easier to bring up. And with mine, I've been, um, I've been integrating all the apps and tables and everything. So it should come up with all of the tables loading and apps and everything. So when? <laughs> I have a version of it now. I have a version of it now that's when, probably... When <laughs> well, well I, I think we should start a Kickstarter for Alan, so yeah, we can... If I, just, <laughs> if I just scrub it and make sure there's nothing that's non-open source in there, I can probably put right. it up this week. Actually, I don't... Yeah. So we have a kit, too. It's, we call it our training guide, but we've done... A, just in the last six months, we did a lot of revamping of it and took out everything that wasn't open source, so... It's one of these things too, where it, we had we got around this when we get new interns, new hires, new people. We give them this VM. You can call it a kit, but it's just a VM with the open. So it goes open open source thing and and just uses the Python uh, 
for, for the ground system right, right. now. And, and it, but along with it is this HTML <coughs> guide, hello world, write your right. first app, blah, blah, you know, and it just, it gets you through one day, you know, in the life of CFS. And, right. and, and so we did, in the last six months, Tam No did a lot to get that way. So it, I think we have to do the same thing, scrub it, but um, I think we can, in short order, make that available too. Somewhere. Oh, that's great. Open. <laughs> <laughs> Somewhere. <laughs> What's everybody doing tonight for dinner? Let's start <laughs> going. That's right. Um, and, and actually, that, that little ratio, and this was purely non scientific. I went out and I can't remember when I did this a few months ago, saying, oh, how many people are downloading? Because this all depends on when the versions were put out there. But it seemed like the ratio to CFE downloads, the app downloads, was four to one. So I don't know whether people weren't just out downloading apps or that app just got released. But I kind of went across the board. Again, not very scientific, but just kind of getting a warm fuzzy of what's happening. Um, and I think we've, I don't want to rehash, I don't know if there's anything new here. Trick it. I think one thing that's really important is that that needs to be addressed is non-NASA users can't submit tickets. Right. Um, it, there's no way to see what folks have found, what's going on. I think that is, that's, that's a big, I think <laughs> that, that's huge. Yeah. Have you got any ideas of how to do well, that? Can <coughs> you put something outside that, at it, least we could see what other non-NASA users are, are, are finding? That would be helpful. That would be helpful to, to us, us too. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, mm. That's, yeah, if we can start integrating the website. Okay. Okay. But we, there's still a resource problem of even having a team of people uh -huh. that can vet them and look through them. And it's, it's, it's kind of surprising that we don't, yeah. I don't know what to say live. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> there's <laughs> limited resources coming from the institution. <laughs> and the other side of that is the non nasty users need insight into what tickets are already right. out there Absolutely. as well. I, in the VDDs, there is verbiage in there that if, if anyone is interested in seeing a ticket report, we can get that to you. But thus far, I, I have not had <coughs> one request for that. So I think there needs to be an easier way. Right. And maybe we just publish them on the new website. I mean, that's, <coughs> maybe that's, yeah. That's. Well, let's keep everybody's, this is great. <laughs> so how often do you guys run your internal SRB and maybe think about a non-NASA uh, communication forum as opposed to us just looking it up? It'd be good to have you guys present and engaged. to us. And maybe it's every two months or something like that where you can present things that That's are sanitized, right, to tell us what's out there, and then maybe part of that meeting could be for us to suggest um, some feedback or something on that. But <coughs> I, I no, think initially it'd be good, rather than all of us independently looking at websites and communication forums and understanding the impact, to be able to interact. Right. You know, and if we all do it individually, do you guys are going to be overwhelmed, right? If we do it in a forum, someone else is asking the question that we wanted to ask and we get the answer. No, that's a great idea. I note that only one of the repos on the website was on GitHub, but the rest are on SourceForge. Um, is there a particular reason to stay on SourceForge? Um, I think having repositories on GitHub might solve part of the problem out of collaboration and openness and right. uh, with issues and pull requests and that sort of thing. Um, even if somebody can't directly curate them, you can see what issues are popping up and see code suggestions directly on the repository. We've had, I don't know if anybody was, we've had discussions to that effect, but of just switching to Git. I don't know if anybody had more. No, 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 there was more evolution and sure. just time doing time, 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 right? <laughs> Down to resources again. I don't. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's really it, nothing keeping us from <coughs> GitHub other than just time to do it. and. Yeah, I know there's an OSAL repository out there, and it's behind now. It's not up to date. And, and, you know, part of it was we were maintaining things on an internal CM system that was different, and I wasn't quite sure how to handle the approach of, you know, like 
taking internal releases and getting the latest releases out on GitHub. It'd be much easier just to develop it right on GitHub and that would be easier to use. And plus a little of it is we're kind of old and we're getting up to speed on things like GitHub. <laughs> <laughs> okay, came, come clean. <laughs> Oh, well, and, and I think we're already touching some just other things. I mean, these two are, to me, the, I'm also seeing you know, there's an energy thing. You can only, the CCBs, again, we've talked many times, we've already seen the resources are limited. So they just can't keep feeding, oh, we'll do this, we'll add this. We'll take care of more assets. So we're capitalizing, but I think if we, the, one of the challenge, you know, one of the questions I'm going to throw, you know, if we went a whole other way, I'll be, I actually got a Proust, after I spoke at SmallSat, I mean, the first person that talked to me was Owen, the object management group, and they're working with a group, a Goddard, the GemSec group, which is a ground system. And I'm not, again, just ideas, but I hear, I say, oh, you know, we could take over the CFE and CFS, and we could run it through there. And, but, uh, you know, it, obviously there's, there's pluses and minuses in where we go in the long term, but. Sorry, this is this is uh, just one step back with the uh, with the the moving to Git uh, in GitHub. Um, it seems like if it, it also solves another problem where we were talking about before about um, com combining everything into one distribution. Um, Git has tools for uh, having sub modules that would sort of so if if we packaged everything into one large Git repository, you could version CoreFlight. Executive and uh, the OSOL uh, differently uh, as as sub modules or sub projects, so that users could um, update those applications uh, from different repositories. Uh, so so it, it sort of allows that right. that feature to 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 come through. Yeah. No thanks. No, I'm over fifty, but I do know about sub modules. It's about as <laughs> I'm guessing you're under thirty, but. <laughs> Was there another? Yeah. Oops, oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm going to get younger, though. <laughs> so I think the real issue here is between NASA and then external users. So everyone internal to NASA kind of has an idea of what's going on, can call in the CCB, but external users really have a problem submitting right. a ticket. And that might be where these kits and potentially kit websites as well, or even the current website we have, would be able to post tickets, review tickets, things like that. So we would basically. I'd hate to segregate it like that, where you have an internal <coughs> NASA ticket set, and then you have external submitted ticket sets. But they could essentially everything internal could be reposted externally right. as well. Um, once the website gets gets a little further along, or once a kit releases a Git form as well, you could all track it via that. All right. Thank you. Thanks. Um. Not the, and, and a couple risks, I think we're all aware of them. So, you know, we can have duplication and fragmentation. Simulink interface layer, we'll hear a little bit about later. Uh, we actually, we got the East Coast version and the West Coast version. So they're, we're trying to bring them together. Um, and software bus network is another one that's gone different paths, but I think there's an effort to get that converged. And, and sometimes not a bad thing. I mean, honestly, the kits are kind of interesting to see where people have taken them. We have different architectures that have pluses and minuses, and I think there's roles for different. Even JSC has two different versions themselves, so you know there might be a role for educating on CFS, but another one that's for the CubeSat world that says, yeah, I just want Cosmos, <coughs> and, and I want it to last the life cycle of my project. So they might have a whole different, and the good old sustainability. Um, there, there are some other things to think about, right? So we, again, I mentioned the resource, but we also have isolated knowledge. We've got to be a little careful of that, I think, just making sure. If, Somebody leaves that we're not, you know, one of the things of sharing the, wealth, the knowledge of the body of knowledge of the people. And I think we're already here in this retention, but, you know, we want trust and loyalty. So the things where people can feed back and hear themselves heard and their expectations. We had a question about is that release schedule, you know, can I expect that to be the true schedule? I mean, those are, those are all valid points that we want to keep in mind as we keep this going. And I'm not really going to, I think we've touched on all these, that we don't really have a formal charter. <laughs> and we don't really have a funding <coughs> model that's, <laughs> um, 
there. So part of what I'm asking today, if anybody's interested, please you know, talk to me and, and, or, or any of us. There, and I was hoping you, oh, good, you made it. So Mike Aguilar, I was hoping at the end of the session you might talk for a couple of minutes. Yeah, good enough. If, if I can, we'll work it in. Thread it in. Oh, excellent. This is, um, so here's my, I, these are something I presented at, uh, actually, I think I did it last year, too. So anybody was here last year. <laughs> I did it small sat. But here's the power of a community. I, I like this, you know, this just because this is real life now. So these are three key dates in the world of, uh, kind of community taking over. So in 93, Microsoft, for those not, not up here, I think that. <laughs> so Microsoft and Carta, I, you know, when I was, my kids were young then, and this was really exciting, multimedia, you know, encyclopedia. So we, you know, get them and start showing our kids. And sure enough, then Wikipedia was launched in 01, and then in 09, Microsoft ended up terminating in Carta, because the community kind of won. I mean, so that's, to me, that's pretty powerful, because you know, Microsoft has 25 years, their market cap is 25 years of our budget. So if they can't compete with a community, my thought is, you know, we gotta, if we make our own community and really make it work, we can, you know, there's a lot to be said there. And we're never gonna do, is NASA, I mean, that's an argument for opening beyond, you know, there's the resources when you let them leverage them correctly. And this is, um, this is kind of more for the group that's going beyond here. I threw these together earlier. <laughs> kind of was brought up on the product management side, I mean, on the CCB side of maybe meeting every other month. I started, to, I tried to do this in August saying, oh, let's get a separate group to start thinking about how we do product management. But held one meeting and that was it. <laughs> the other day jobs took over. But the approach is, you know, we got to understand why we're doing what we're doing, then what, and then we can do the how. And we've already talked about some of the how. And, and then, um, then we could review the plan. So this was an approach for just, it's kind of a generic approach, but it's really for you know, thinking about our governance. And you know, if we really gotta get to the root of why are we doing what we're doing? And if we're trying to be an open to everybody, and maybe there's, again, there might be an inside or an external, the bi-monthly, there might be, there's different ways to skin this cat. And again, at the, for here, I was just gonna try to get the open, we're already having it, the good conversation. So, the challenge of making a transition, if we, if where we want to go is, you know, we got to have the same vision. Um, we're government, so, but it's, it's easy to me, though, this is the right conversation to have. Just what, is the, what are the issues, and we'll worry about the how, we'll get to the hows. But if we can have the, the whys and the whats, then we can get there, and instead of just, oh, we can never do that. So, and once we can align it, we'll figure out the infrastructure. So, the remainder of this session, um, and we're already kind of running over, but we had the right kind of conversation already is, you know, but I was gonna try to get a little bit of the why, throw out an idea or two, and then call us and get Mike up here to talk about some of the hows. I think he's already working this out for us. So this is actually the same thing I threw up last year, and maybe it's not the, you know, to me it's, I'll just read it because I didn't want to paraphrase. It's the advance of creation, the evolution, promotion, and support of a class B flight software system and that may not be everybody else's. You know, that's what we started with because that was back in the day at Goddard, that was what we were trying to solve. Now a CubeSat mission, or whether they care about 7150 compliance may be totally different domain. So if we're opening to them, maybe we just have to have, have, to have a mechanism to solve, satisfy that end. And then I added open, open source community and I actually stole some of this from Eclipse. So I said, well, they're kind of a plug-in model and said, why not, you know, so they put out their, so it's, you know, so complementary products and capabilities and services, a lot of, but I think that makes sense in us too, because we're still, you know, we're talking about, do we want a model where we can plug in new platform support packages <coughs> and make really clear, you know, rules for how somebody can do that? We don't really have those rules right now. And the way it's happening is, you know, the CCB, well, we add new ones, but now you got the problem of validating on the different platforms, and that's certainly not gonna scale. I mean, we can't, the CCB certainly cannot keep adding platforms to their portfolio. Um, so to me, it would be better, you know, you gotta have a way to tell people this is how you add it and this is how you certify it. But, or, um, and again, no constraints on complementary. So it's kind of making that community flip. Um, 
So one, one idea is, you know, just instead of the board collecting, keep intaking is, you know, kind of what I just mentioned. And now they're an organization that provides the process and the tools for somebody else to distribute and integrate, but we just create a, poor, a core thing. That, that's all we focus on. So here, here's a, again, just a, so in this world, uh, that, so there's the NASA CCB, and they would, they would actually release a, just a, a scaled down product. And that might include five apps, the scheduler app, and um, we have to, whatever architectural apps, health and safety that everybody might want that relies on. And I'm calling them arch architectural apps because they have, you know, people depend on their API to the app. So, and that could be something where you, you know, that's all they control. They don't try to control all the other apps. So if they release the processes for adding apps, you know, you could have distributors. And NASA itself could be a distributor. We could say, okay, yeah, we are going to distribute a product. But we've sc we scaled this back to where it's just, you know, we're going we're to release three platforms. That's all we're going to release, we being NASA. And we'll release these set of architectural apps. The rest will be out somewhere in the community assets where a distributor can get to them and assemble a final product. And that way, other people could add apps, they could add platform support packages. Alan's going over some device models and plug-in <coughs> model ideas later today. You know, then we could say, well, this is how you add a hardware device plug-in. You know, but, but this group doesn't continually, did, was there a, yeah, oh, sure. One thing that stands out to me with this that would be good is that uh, you could control classification. Because with the NASA one, you could still maintain the, the proper pedigrees for what we do, but if the community adds their own parts, you know, CubeSats, for example, don't necessarily right. have to follow our you know, class A and B type standards. Right. And you but could you could still have both, and they could still use the same, so that's an interesting idea. So the distributor, it could be a CubeSats distributor, and they just say here, and we've even tuned it for you. That, that's Red, right. Red Hat. And that's great. It's still based CF. on all our core stuff, but they maybe did it faster and it worked better in their world. And we maybe had some cursory involvement in it, but uh, they didn't have to go through everything we do, yet we can still maintain the stuff that's most important to us and make sure it, it follows our process. Right. So that's, yeah. That's, that's kind of behind it. Yeah, it's, it's. That just stood out to me. Uh, and, uh, in addition to what he said, um, Interesting, there's no feedback explicit arrow back into NASA, which I think is something that would really benefit. Right, I guess NASA I had trouble more. taking it back, but again, this is okay. a first drawing draft. So. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I'd also say implicitly, this is actually probably what's going on right now in a lot of ways, even though it's not formal by any stretch of the but people will take the NASA release and, and use it for their mission. So I think this is actually somewhat going on today anyway, in an informal manner. I think, and that's what I was, that's where I go to like the, but if somebody wanted to add a PSP, I guess I get to that, or platform, what do, they, what do they do with it? Or how, how do they document it and make it available to come out of that cloud and be assembled? Uh, that, we, that's, I mean, we don't, and I was hoping Joel, he apparently couldn't come after, from OAR, if Joel, yeah, Jarrell. He's on the uh, oh, oh, there, <laughs> so, I was like, well then maybe OAR could be a distributor and then they could package our attempts with, I don't know, you know, yeah, I don't know. I don't but that's where you can leverage Git. And, and leverage that community and leverage more of the community process and the fact that you maintain a CCD. I like, oh, sorry. Sorry. I, like sorry. Idea, <laughs> I like the idea of the feedback loop back right, into right. NASA. Didn't as miss it goes. Up. And then, uh, yes, I think you can leverage from an open source consortium type community process that are out there. Most of those are out there. Even Eclipse, like you were using, has that. And so we in the open source community can help guide you Right. To, to use the proper infrastructures that are out there and the and the really the the human engineering. <laughs> that right, that's the hard. I mean, I that that honestly, to go on. It, it, and, and I like where you you said, okay, NASA is going to own CCB and and govern like what you're saying, the class B and above, and maintain your processes, but let the rest of it stay out in the wild, and contribute to CubeSat elements, commercial elements, right. and and the like. Well, I doubt that's on. I don't think that's on. Yeah, no, it's hard. <laughs> it it, it kind of is. And it, it, so. All right, thanks. No, any other comments or thoughts? Oh, yeah. oh 
it, it, would somebody out there be able to just stand up a Git repository off of like the OAR website or some website and just pull from the NASA Git repository? Because that, that's the biggest part is we can't really host and manage those kind of things. Yeah, we, we, we have <laughs> vast experience pulling from other repository types, CDS and whatnot, to get with our community prod, our things. So we'd be happy to help migrate there. there you go. That's all right, but we have people streaming. So oh, oh, I'm okay. sorry. Yeah. All right, we'll sign him so, up. So, <laughs> so that's why I want to get it on recording. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, we, and I'll speak this not from an OAR point of view, but from an Artem's community point of view. We'd like to help uh, provide all that infrastructure and that knowledge, and uh, and help get CFS and CFE out into the wild, into Git. I think that's the best way to do. So, however we can help, just leverage us, and and we'll work during this week to figure that out. How we can help. So. <coughs> so I, I some oops. So in terms of um, I don't know if there's a lot. Well, I think I've touched on a lot of these. So yeah, so there might be architectural ones. All right, I didn't mention like file manager. You're going to need transport. So this core group, you got to have some, there's a couple core apps and then the generic CI and TO, health and safety, um, maybe CFDP or maybe the trivial file transport, somebody that gets you. And then um, again, this, this was an area we do, we'd have to get better. I mean, if we're going to have abstractions or device drivers or app, we should have easy ways to plug them in and that's well documented or whoever wants to contribute. And then uh, I think we talked about the other part. So. Now here was another idea, and this was actually thrown in, but it's given to me, so I won't take uh, credit for it, but it was somebody looking at other open source. And this isn't, it's kind of, they're not, or they're not, you know, I say orthogonal to each other. They're, they're complementary, but this is actually a different approach, just looking at the structure of an organization rather than the process flow. And they actually might be complementary, but they, um, the idea was, you know, you got up standing up the whole organization. You got a board of directors, and the committee's sitting off the side where things like, oh, I got marketing, we got legal, and we got all these other things going on, which, again, this takes resources. But this just thinks about the problem from a different direction. Then you got a technical steering committee who's going to be guiding the product, and our CCB is kind of playing two roles right now. They're kind of doing that and doing what I consider CCB work down here. And then user committees would be, you know, so the user committee, and that's already been discussed some, so they could get feedback into the product. And what these groups are, the different, I mean, this again was just one skinning of it, but it's almost aligned with the other, even though they came from two different sources, um, with the other diagram, you know, where this group would be chartered with being a project, and then they would have their own CCB that they control because they're controlling that part of the product. And then the technical steering committee would be keeping all these groups going in the right direction. And then um, it's kind of interesting because this was another group, this was Vantage Systems that came up with, looked at this, and they looked across a couple open source organizations when they looked at this. And I had drawn up the other picture, but then we both you know, had the distribution groups kind of as a, a way possibly to, to, to do this. So it's not much different, it's looking at it more from a structural, and I have no idea, you know, again, this would need a funding model. You'd need, you'd need some way to get this off the ground, or whether it's the same funding model we use and get the board of directors working. I don't know. So not to belabor too late, because I want to give Mike a little time before we run out of time. Since I think we've, unless there's other issues that have come up, I think we've had some great discussions on the kind of things we need to work with. Um, so this is kind of more words, and these slides I can make available about the board of director roles, the technical steering would be the cross-cutting issues, and I don't want to go, actually, where are we on time? I think it might be worth a five-minute break after Mike, just so we can, <coughs> yeah, we're, we're doing pretty good. So let me, so yeah, some of the concepts here are probably worth 
So the, the group would be a self-governing group. And um, in our world, it's almost, I'd almost think of it as a hub and spoke because we're not necessarily hi hierarchical like that, the way we're operating. But, um, so those would be their own managers and projects. And now whether those could be joint government and private or commercial, you know, virtual teams, I don't, that would take some thought. Um, but they would, you know, those teams below would, you know, work with the, the, the board above, the two boards that would lead them. And then they'd led by, you know, a, a, a lead that would lead the, the team. So the other, the other model that we talked about, I mean, it's kind of the same, in a sense, it's the same thing, but the dis not, we were distributing, in a sense, we were distributing the group saying, you know, NASA's gonna control this isolated <laughs> or smaller subset and then other people could pick up whatever points they wanted and they plug them back into the product. So it's just kind of two different ways of distributed versus more, this is more centralized control. And I don't know if there's, I don't wanna get too down this idea. Oh, that was an old slide. <laughs> um, legal. Yes, legal. So we're almost ready for Mike. <laughs> so, yeah, I'll, I'll give Mike some time. So Mike is from the NASA Engineering um, Safety Commission. I got all the acronym right. So he's, like I said, he helped um, fund that initial CCB two years ago. So the, the group, so that we're very appreciative of that. And he's facilitated a lot of things. He's been working behind the scenes at headquarters, looking at some of the issues we've talked about already and really seeing how he can help out from a policy point of view. I don't think so. So why don't I switch here? Negative. Yeah. Oops. Oops. yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. Did I leave the mic on? Is somebody in the mic? Did I? Uh, oh, that's fine. That's fine. I just want to know where it goes. Good enough. I, I'm going to make this real quick. Um, I work for the NASA Engineering and Safety Center, and what it is is a, a group that was started up after the Challenger and Columbia accidents as a third tier of, <coughs> in essence, if you have management arguing for a particular launch and you have engineering arguing for a particular no launch, they needed a third person, which was a recommendation out of the CABE and Challenger reports, which was you need an engineering group that's not involved with the program, with the project, that strictly builds engineering. And I, I'm the entire software department. What we do is, no, I, I, it works. Um, it's like Mission Impossible. If you remember the old Mission Impossible, not the crap that's out now. Um, <laughs> the beginning was he'd get, he'd, he'd, you'd see him flipping folders. And the pictures that were in color usually turned up on the show, and the ones that were in black and white, he was just flipping by them. But he was building a team. And so the way I work is I'll get an assessment saying, we think you ought to look into the fact that they're not doing a, a water landing test, okay? And then I'll go throughout NASA and find the experts we already have in NASA or in industry or in academia and put a team together and say, go look into this for me. So when I say I'm the only software guy, I'm the guy picking the folders and I put teams together. I did the uh, Toyota unintended acceleration. That was my team. So that's the kind of work we do, but I'm also the NASA fellow for software, which means I am promoting the capabilities of NASA and making sure they continue. So where, I, where, my, where your discussion was really more technical and engineering, we can, we, can, we can manage to get to GitHub. We can build a particular organizational structure that supports all these subclasses. What I run into is, can we legally do it is there a process to do it? And it was very interesting for me to run into those issues when all I was trying to do was make it easier for NASA to share software amongst NASA. <coughs> so to give you the state of the issues, um, NASA is trying to move away from individual centers competing against each other to all the centers working within a budget to actually manage their budgets better and not overlap and compete so much. Um, with that, in fact, uh, it turns out that the definition of release previously was defined as any software going from one cubicle to another cubicle in NASA. 
and you had to go through an entire release process through the lawyers and through policies and procedures, which could take, I've had it take more than 18 months to hand software from one cubicle to the next. Um, that was wrong, okay? The idea is simply, so I have been involved with rewriting some of the policies and directives for NASA such that the idea of release is when it goes outside of NASA to something we don't control. And anything with inside NASA, you can carry in your back pocket, okay? And that's almost, it's taken mm, 14 months now to go through the process, and they should have that fixed up. Now, that's inside NASA. For a good deal of this audience, it's not going to change anything. For us to get software out to you, the CFE, CFS group had to go open source because to release it piecemeal through this process would have meant you would have got an app every year, you know, this kind of a thing. Secondly, uh, there's an ownership thing where part of this big process is NASA doesn't want to get into litigation saying, you can't release this, it's got my library in it, and my library is not releasable except I, ha I have to get funded for that, et cetera, et cetera. So there's legal issues on ownership, which is one of them. There's legal issues that deal with um, international security issues, too, that they have to deal with. And it's a mess. So you guys don't want to get involved with that. That's my job, okay? The other side is a lot of you talked about getting things back into CFS. And it's real interesting. NASA right now has no policy or procedure of accepting somebody else's code back into NASA, okay? We can buy board support packages. We can buy those things because they come with a licensing agreement. But for some group that worked with CFE, CFS, and has some apps that we would really like to have back in NASA, I have not found a process or procedure to get that in because somehow we have to legally get the owner of that software to define that they, first they have to legitimately own the software, which is their problem, and then they have to give up the ownership to NASA. And there's no policy for that right now. And that's a, my next, that's another step down the road. Um, within NASA, this still doesn't affect a lot of you here, but within NASA, we're also working on code sharing libraries. We have a, I think there will be a presentation during this week, which deals with, I've been working with the OCIO office where we have a middleware which can look at GitHub and all these other different repositories. It doesn't care what repository you have. And it gives you a catalog of what's in those repositories. And you can search into those repositories based on certain attributes. And then once you get deep enough, you can do a full text search on the code that's in those repositories. And that has actually been funded. So what it should be is a shared software within NASA, behind the NASA firewall. And from that catalog or repository, that, that idea, we will then pull things that can go out across the NASA firewall into the public arena. And that's a big push. That's actually coming out of the GAO office. So that's actually funded. Now, the other topic I might touch on is every one of you probably is in this room saying, how can I assure myself that CFE, CFS has a long enough lifetime so that I base my products on it and I know that there's enough funding and support that keeps it rolling, okay? I mean, that's the big elephant in the room. Um, I have presented CFE, CFS to headquarters, to the legal office, to Lightfoot, to the chief engineer's office. They know what it is. They know how much money it's saving. There was a really nice slide developed by the group which was somewhat a little bit controversial, but it, it works. You take the code size for a normal CFE, CFS installation, you run it through our Kokomo models or our Searsim models, you estimate what it would take to build that again from scratch with no information whatsoever, and you get in the millions of dollars, okay? And then you go and argue that if you use CFE, CFS, you can save yourself a millions of dollars, and a particular science effort <coughs> can now be funded, or else you can spend that money starting from scratch and you can't do this other science effort. And it makes a real good argument. And I believe, I personally believe in the next couple of years I will get some funding out of NASA to support CFE, CFS as its own entity, as a reusable asset. One of the arguments that a number of us are making is there are particular disciplines who don't have facilities. We don't have wind tunnels. We don't have thermal vac chambers. But we have models. 
and we have simulations, and we have things that you can consider our facilities that need maintenance the same way other hardware facilities do. You have to continuously own the model and update the model as you go along. A lot of our modeling guys don't have any updates to their models. They get funded if they work within an aerospace area that is commercially viable. <coughs> they, will, they will then pay for that new wind tunnel technique. But there's very few people that really want to care about landing in Europa or something like this. And we need those models. And so we're arguing that the software and modeling software, Simulink, those kind of things, are our facilities. And we need facility money to support those facilities. And I think that's going to come across. Can, can I interrupt over here? So yeah. What could we provide to you to help? Would it be helpful that you get metrics from us to say, no, I, this across I've, this many missions? I've sold them. Okay. Okay. Good. I've sold them. I really have. Um, I have been told to continue to support you guys. What I, I mentioned, one of the things is we don't have any money for this meeting, right? And I told my guys, I, I literally told them yesterday, I said, in my next budget, I'm going to include money so that maybe I can't fund the whole meeting, but I'll fund uh, a, a WebEx site and a telecom and maybe streaming or maybe recording of the, of the material, and then we will publish the material where you can get to it. Um, that would be a good start. And I can certainly do that. That's within my budget. Um, but in the future, I think we have to have a group that's in NASA that deals with reusable software, because it's not just CFE, CFS, that are assets and resources that brings down the cost of doing these science projects. So I, should, I was going to ask when I stood up, I said, is there anybody here from legal or headquarters, right? <laughs> OK, I'm safe. It is being streamed. Watch it. <laughs> All right, well, thanks. I'm thinking maybe a 10 minute, oh, I'm oh, sorry. Let's get us. I actually don't know who best to address this question to, but the, um, so the mission statement oh, that was kind of discussed yeah. earlier was uh, class B software, um, but there was some mention of some class A improvements that had been made to the software. Kind of what's the direction that NASA is taking that in terms of usage for class it's, A? It's actually very big. C CFE, CFS, and, and, and I, I already got her in trouble numerous times. Um, it's Class A. It's going on the backup flight processor for the Orion spacecraft. And uh, uh, Lori. 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 <laughs> Patel? Poca. I, I get it always wrong. She, she was, she found funding to do the work to go and make Class A. And it was quite interesting because there is no real written down certification as what Class A is coming from Class B. I mean, you do it right, and you call it Class A. But to go from Class B to Class A was a real interesting experiment. And she's the first example of it. And now I am, um, well, I was going to talk to you later before I got you on the hot seat. Do you want to talk to it? I do. Okay. Well, you can hold on. You can stay in the hot seat. Okay. You can. <laughs> well, so so I was going to beg to differ with your goal your goal on that because I was going to say I don't think the goal is to m have <coughs> Class B software. Okay. I think the gate. No, the, my goal. Okay. My funding source, as a matter of fact, comes with the with the stipulation the, the stipulation that we are going to have and maintain um, a set of Class A software that is available for not only this. Orion, but the next generation spacecraft, which are, which may be a HAB or whatever we do next. So that's kind of my, you know, at, at Johnson, that's our big concern. Is so, so my flavor is that whatever we do, we need to maintain the Class A tests. We need to maintain the pedigree. Fine if we put it out there for open source and get, and people don't do Class A. But yes. if if you do do it, it's there. So Agreed. I would like to continue to maintain that as best we can you know, in, in future releases. And, and what, what I say is you, you can't certify a, a bunch of code on its own. You have right. to have a mission and a flight. But what we can do is provide the test artifacts and all the, um, the artifacts, the, the ability to generate the artifacts that you need to do Class A, and that's what we're doing. And we're trying to add to the product line and keep it there. 
No, that's great. Now, that's why I put it up there. I mean, in, yeah. in the slide before, I think said it's, if we don't have the same vision, we've got to figure out what it is. And so. Well, at one point, so I mentioned to the fact that I wanted to help uh, uh, maintain at, for the, like the, the funding that I get from the AES. I was like, we, we want to do an agency asset for reuse. And they went, well, w we can go for that, but as long as you say it's an agency asset for Class A reuse, then that's good. what we'll be. So I'm like, all right, that's, <laughs> what, that's what I'm going to say. So. Good. So that's, but then I, I guess it does. So when, we, when the board releases, well, I shouldn't say, but when somebody releases a product within the NASA, then that, they're running tests <coughs> that do Class B level certification. Well, I think and th those are the assets that we own. You know, that, that we own, that right. core set of architectural assets should be Class A. And there may be other applications that are Class A, but not necessarily there may be specific to Orion or something right. Something else. So we don't need to maintain that. And then the user community can make whatever class they want. We're not going to pull them back in and put them on a Class A vehicle, but it might be great for a UAV or a CubeSat or something like that. So but I think the Class A, because it's a lot of work to maintain all those artifacts, is going to be a limited set of right. everything that's available. Like but would that be, so would you check that out of the library, or would you always just kind of maintain your own? Would, you take, would Jonathan take a delivery from the CFF for Class A as a starting point? We, that's in fact what we're doing for Orion. Okay. So, so okay. Orion is taking the code from SourceForge, if you will, because we told them Okay. Good. And no. So we don't want a separate path. Okay. Words, all that. And and so I think, but but I, I would say Johnson is sort of taking it as their uh, burden, if you will, or, but hope to, to try and maintain all that stuff. But we would really like to instill a, kind of a discipline in the CCB and the community that. Um, you can that yeah. I'll let you have that. Yeah. That, that if you do develop a new, uh, you know, um, if you do change, say, an O self, or there, there's going to be a, a change somewhere, that when you make that change, you maintain the tests. Uh, let, let's say when we, at one point, we had 100% 100% branch level, all 100% code coverage, right? Well, in order to maintain the class A, you need to maintain that. So if there's right. a, a change in the code, we want to instill the discipline you know, hopefully these are little deltas. It's not, we took a big chunk of the test, but now it's going to be deltas. And so hopefully, I don't think it should be that much of a burden when you make the change to make sure the tests work with the change. So if we can maintain that, I think that goes a long way to maintaining the class A. And that's important. That comes part of the charter. I mean, to me, that's important. Yeah. yeah. That's good. Uh -huh. no, I'm good. <laughs>